Dredge. It's a calm, peaceful fishing simulator where you can upgrade your boat, rods, engines, and play as a cat. Hang on, that's not right. No, this is the script for Cat Goes Fishing. Dredge is nothing like that. The similarities between Cat Go Fishing and Dredge lie in the fact that you go fishing and upgrade your gear. That is also where the similarities end. Dredge is a fishing game, but it definitely strays farther from the norm than most. It's filled with eldritch horrors, unsolved mysteries, and many other secrets that you'll get to discover by watching this video. And because I'm a masochist, we won't leave any stone unturned or spot unfished, if you will. Welcome to The 100, the series where I will 100% complete 100 games and give them a score from 0 to 100 at the end based on 10 different categories. Those categories being music, gameplay, atmosphere, difficulty, length, story, variety, uniqueness, how much fun it was to finish, and how much fun it was to complete. To clarify, difficulty and length don't just mean how hard or long the game was, but how appropriate the difficulty or length felt in the context of the specific game. Now that that's out of the way, let's not waste any more time and get right to the game. First, we meet our character. An older gentleman looking for a new gig as a fisherman, and it seems like we just might have found one. And just as fast as we met our fisherman, we crashed into a rock. But that's okay, because the not at all shady, greedy, or manipulative mayor found us and told us that he would give us a new ship to use as long as we paid off our debt. Sounds like a pretty good deal to me, right? But how do we pay off our debt? You might be asking. Well, if you would just be patient, I'm going to tell you. It's by fishing. We have to fish. We have to go out, catch some fish, bring them back because it helps sustain the town, make some money, and keep people alive. We quickly set out on our first fishing expedition, but not before the mayor tells us to make sure that we're back before the fog rolls in at dark. I'm sure that won't be important. We begin fishing for blue mackerel right outside the town. Fishing is very easy in this game, but the challenge really is not supposed to come from the fishing. It's more challenging to manage your inventory than it even is to fish. But we'll get to more of the challenges as the video progresses, so don't you worry. After a long, hard day of fishing that wasn't actually that long or that hard, we're introduced to the fishmonger, who we will sell our fish to, and he will give us money, and that's pretty much it. But it's nice to have money, so that's not too bad. I also didn't realize that you could hold F to sell all your fish at once, so if you're playing this game, make sure you do that, because I spent way too long selling each fish individually. Do not be like me. Once we get out of the fishmonger, we are greeted by the mayor, who very kindly grants us a research part, which is going to be very important for several achievements later on which I knew, but I didn't prioritize collecting them nearly as much as I should. So once again, don't be like me. Get all the research parts you can. They will make your life so much easier. Just collect them all, all the time. Once we get done with that, we meet the shipwright. She will help us repair our ship. She can help us repair crab pots and we can buy new gear from her once we unlock it by researching it. Other than that, we won't see her too much, to be totally honest with you. There is the dry dock that she technically supplies, but that's not really directly in contact with her. It's mostly an on our own thing. So this is pretty much all we're gonna talk about her, probably for most of the video. So yeah. Once we're done with the shipwright, we head back over to the mayor and tell him that we would like to pay off all of our debt in full. We are now not in debt to this town anymore, and we can just come here to rest, upgrade our ship, repair it, sell fish, you know, the usual, and we're ready to head out on our own. So let's get to it. After another couple days of exploration and fishing, we end up talking to the lighthouse keeper who is quite ominous and has a couple things to say to us. She mostly asks why I'm here, 
and if I have any business here. And if not, I should probably leave. So, very welcoming and pleasant, I would say, all around. Also, I forgot to mention that by this time, we've collected two achievements so far. Introductions, just for meeting all the people in Greater Morrow, which is the name of the town that we started in. And Perfect Packing, which, as you just saw, is the achievement for filling up every single slot in your cargo space. Which, I'm pretty sure that I got on accident. I spent a large portion of the next few days just grinding fish, trying to get as much money as I could to upgrade my ship and afford research parts. Um, and I started to get comfortable in the area, which obviously was a mistake. I learned very quickly that my sanity meter was something that I very much needed to pay attention to. Represented by the eye in the top middle of my screen, the closer to red it gets, the worse it is, and it can spawn hallucinations bad fish and as I learned it can also spawn rocks right in front of your ship that are not that easy to avoid after catching fish for money for quite some time and a few much needed upgrades I decided it was time to set out and explore and I came across this shrine with cod carved into it I obviously knew that I was gonna have to make a pattern of cod somehow but I decided to leave that for later instead I was more focused on progressing the story but don't worry We'll be back here before too long. Shortly after I return to the dock, I give one of the weird mutated fish that I caught to the fishmonger. He cuts it open, pulls out a handkerchief, and gives it to me and tells me that it will be of some significance. I don't really know what that's supposed to mean, but I'm not going to be rude, so I take it. Of course, immediately after that, I learn the significance of the handkerchief from a man who pressed his face up against my boat cabin window, which is super weird in and of itself, but he tells me he can't tell me anything about it here, and that I need to meet him at Blackstone Isle, which is presumably where he lives. So, of course, we set off in that direction. Obviously, by that, I mean it took me an extra two days to head over there, because I spent the entire two days catching fish and doing menial side quests that I didn't need to. Um, but anyways, we're there now, so... I meet the man at his house on Blackstone Isle, and he meets me at the door telling me that he is a collector of ancient artifacts, and that in return for me collecting ancient artifacts from him, he will outfit my ship with the ability to dredge the depths for treasure, which seems like a pretty good deal to me, so of course I accept. We now have the ability to do the namesake of the game, Dredge. And from this point on, we're going to have to take things a little bit faster because if we go at this pace for the rest of the video, it's going to take five hours. And I don't have that kind of time. And I know you don't either. So let's speed things up a little bit and get to the next important part of the story. We make our way over to the spot marked on our map by the collector and we find ourselves a large gold key. This is the first of the artifacts and it is absolutely the easiest one to get. Um, now all we have to do is bring it back to the collector. We deliver the key back to the collector, and it grants us with our next achievement, the key. As well as the fact that in return for the key, he grants us the movement ability, haste, which for a time speeds up our ship quite dramatically, and I wish now that I had done that earlier. He also tells us that the next artifact is going to be southwest at the Gale Cliffs which means it's time to head in that direction. We make a quick pit stop to complete that shrine from earlier uh, because I remembered it and we did not come right back to it like I said we would, but we came back to it regardless. Um, but after far longer than it should have taken us, we make our way to the Gale Cliffs, finally. It took way too long to get here, but eventually we do meet the traveling merchant who is basically going to be our best friend for the rest of the game. During this time, we did actually manage to get one more achievement, Careless Harvesting, which technically means we're 10% of the way through the achievements and 100%ing the game. However, you will quickly learn that that is obviously not actually the truth. Remember the fishmonger from earlier and the shipwright and the dry dock? Well, the traveling merchant or the wandering trader, as I like to call her, is pretty much all of those things in one. So, if we wanted to, we really 
wouldn't ever have to return to there. And that's why she's going to be our best friend for the rest of the run. I spent a very long time here not doing much of anything. Driving around, collecting fish, and pretty much doing nothing else. But we did get an achievement for selling $2,500 worth of fish. So that's something, I guess. Roughly 10 minutes later, we find our very next artifact, the music box, and we head back to Blackstone Isle to deliver it to the collector. He graciously accepts the artifact and grants us the ability Manifest, which allows us to travel back to Blackstone Isle at will whenever we want, as well as the achievement, The Secret, for surrendering the music box to him. Roughly another 10 minutes later, we get our next achievement, Hull Improved, for upgrading to the second tier of Hull. And now, our achievement rate is going to pick up heavily. We're going to start collecting them a lot quicker and making a lot more progress, because for a long time there, I spent a significant portion of my time doing nothing. At this point, we had made our way over to Stellar Basin, the place where our next artifact would be located, protected by this giant Kraken-esque sea monster thing, and it's also where our next couple achievements are going to come from. I spent quite a while here just looking at the achievements, trying to figure out which would be the easiest to complete the fastest. I eventually found the Cruel Heat achievement, which we unlocked by keeping the haste burn meter above 50% for 10 seconds. Quite an easy one to get, but that was the next one. Not long after that, we got our next achievement, Unwanted, for discarding 25 fish. Another pretty easy, quick one to just get out of the way. Quite shortly after that, we got From the Fog for hearing a foghorn echo at night. I also realized that I could very easily get our next achievement, Dimensional Bypass, by traversing a long distance using Manifest to get back to Blackstone Isle. So I did that pretty much immediately after. Eventually, we do collect the next artifact, the ring, and we bring it back to the collector who grants us the ability Banish, which allows us to fend off enemies attacking our ship, which will be very useful later, as well as the fact that we gain the achievement, the Bond, for entrusting the ring to the collector. Eventually, we do make our way to the next fishing spot, the Twisted Strand, as well as catching a few fish along the way, granting us the achievement Lifted from the Deep for catching 250 fish using rods. Next up, we've got a few achievements, all completed within 10 minutes of each other, and I'm just going to go through them because they really just are related to upgrading my ship. The first one is Hull Refined for upgrading to the third hull tier. Second one is Swift Reaper for having a combined fishing speed of 200%. And the third one is No Time to Linger for having a combined engine speed of 75 kilonauts. I, I never even, until this point, writing this script, questioned what KN means, and I'm going to look it up. Give me like two seconds. All right, that was embarrassing. I was just overthinking it. It just stands for knots. That's it. After a couple hours of side questing and collecting fish, which will actually prove to be quite important later, I make my way into the company of this old pilot who tells me that I need to help him take out some mine suckers in return for presumably what is probably the next artifact, and I haven't found a way to progress elsewhere up to this point, so that's what we're going to do. After running around for a while and collecting all kinds of fish so that he could make some bait for the mine suckers, we eventually collect all of the bait, lure the mine suckers into our trap, and we kill the first one, and then the second one, and then the third one. I spent a while trying to figure out why the quest wouldn't complete, and I eventually realized that I needed to bring him the corpses of the mine suckers, but once we figured that out, we brought them back to him, and we completed the quest for a pretty nice reward. And just like that, we've collected our fourth and second to last artifact for the collector. We return to the collector and by this point, you know the drill. We give him the relic, he gives us new ability. In this case, it's called Atrophy. It allows us to harvest an entire school of fish just by pressing a button, which is actually quite nice. And it doesn't say it, but it also definitely makes aberrations have a significantly higher chance to spawn so that's pretty nice too on top of that it also grants us the next achievement the chains for relinquishing the necklace after another 
20-ish minutes of grinding, I found myself with two more achievements related to the upgrading of my ship. The first one being Hull Advanced for upgrading to the fourth tier hull, and Light Up the Night for having a combined light strength of 3,000 lumens. After a chat with the Collector about where our next artifact is going to be located, we make our way over to the Devil's Spine and meet this crazy old guy who tells me that I need to collect three fathomless flames, and I have nothing better to do, so honestly, why not? At this point, after quite a while of grinding, catching fish, selling, trying to make money, gathering research parts, and all that jazz, we had managed to collect two fathomless flames, but... Before we did that, we decided that we were going to head over to the trinket shop in Little Morrow and sell all of our gear. Because of this little escapade, we had earned ourselves another achievement, cash for gold, for selling a total of $1,500 worth of trinkets. This also marks quite an important part of our journey. With the unlock of the cash for gold achievement, we are technically 50% of the way complete with the game. That's 20 achievements out of 40. However, unfortunately, this is about the part where the game really starts to drag, and you'll see what I mean pretty soon. We make our way back to the statues and light the final flame after collecting all the fish for it. And we have a little conversation with our crazy friend here. We tell him about the fact that we lit all the flames and he starts doing some crazy chant and we just sit back and watch and the game describes it as, I kid you not, he dies away. He doesn't fade away or die slowly, he dies away. But I don't really care what happened to him because he left behind the pocket watch which is our final relic so I'm alright with it. I'm sure you know by now what's going to happen. We make our way over to the collector. We give him our relic. And this time, it's a little different. He tells me that we have to take a journey, but I'm pretty sure that this is going to be the end of the story. So I tell him that I'll wait and we can catch up later. Now, this is when the real achievement hunting begins. From the collector, we just earned the achievement, the moment, for giving up the pocket watch which is our 21th achievement, if you've been keeping track. And that means that we are just barely over halfway. So we have a long way to go still. I spent a lot of time during this time looking through my encyclopedia, trying to figure out what fish I still needed to catch, what crabs I still needed to trap, what aberrations I haven't found, and things like that. So a lot of this next segment is going to be trying to find fish, um researching a lot of upgrades and going through things that I haven't been able to find as well as side quests that I've been looking for the whole game. Speaking of side quests I've been looking for the whole game, there are four of these hooded figures, a red, a yellow, a blue, and a purple, I believe, if I remember correctly. Anyways, I could not find two of them for the longest time. You basically have to catch fish, whichever ones they're requesting, and bring them back to them. And then they'll give you a book that you can read that helps increase one of your stats in some ways. But I took forever finding the last two. I found the first two naturally. I have no idea where the other two were. Like, I could not find them anywhere until much later. Speaking of much later, about an hour and a half after we got the pocket watch... We finally got our next achievement, which is feeling prepared for installing equipment in every slot on the ship. And that took way longer than it should have. I spent a lot of time not focusing and not doing much of anything. But luckily within another 20 minutes of that, we got another achievement trapped by these walls for catching 100 crabs in crab pots. So at least we got something to show for how long this took us. Roughly another hour later, we got our next achievement, Banisher. We came around this corner in Gale Cliffs, activated our Banish ability, and we banished this big, huge sea monster coming out of this rock away, and got our achievement. Simple as that. It only took me an hour and a half. Very quickly, after completing Banisher, we got our very next achievement, only three minutes later, with the Researcher Nets achievement for researching all nets. 
And 15 minutes after that, we got our researcher pots achievement for researching all pots. So now we're starting to pick up the pace again a little bit and make some progress a little bit quicker. Hopefully it stays that way, but I'm editing this video, obviously, and I know it doesn't, so don't get your hopes up. Luckily for us, there is one more achievement we can get before taking a long hiatus of no achievements, and that achievement is safe havens for visiting every dock in the game, which is the one I achieved by visiting this little dock with a big old lighthouse on top of it. That long hiatus I was just talking about, well, that's coming into play now. I knew I was going to have to have a troll net behind my boat for quite some time because for this next achievement, we had to catch 150 fish in troll nets. However, I did not think it was going to take five hours to get tangled in this web. But that ended up being how long it was in between safe havens and tangled in this web. Well, hunting for our next achievement, we had a bit of an encounter with something I hadn't come across in the game so far and I believe it led to my first death of the game I'll just let you watch it real quick now that I have officially learned the consequences for letting your sanity meter get too low we head back over to the twisted strand to grab our next achievement we collect some bait from the old pirate which we use to get our next achievement mixed results which entails using mixed bait to attract three different species to a single spot. Just five minutes later, I pull out my spyglass and spot a volcanic fish for our next trophy, Prey Sighted, for spotting a fish of each category through the spyglass. This is actually a pretty important milestone achievement, given that this is the 30th achievement we've completed so far, meaning that we're 75% of the way through. Since three of the achievements coming up, which we will get to later, are pretty much free, that means we only have really seven more achievements to go, even though two of those are the most difficult ones. At long last, I had finally found all of the hooded figures, which was quite easy to complete their quest, to be totally honest, once I found them. The issue was just finding them. But once I completed their quests, I got the achievement Providence for completing all side quests one way or another, which implies that there's multiple ways to do it, but I'm not sure if that's true. Literally immediately after completing that achievement, we use our atrophy ability to get another achievement called Unsustainable Fishing for using atrophy on a fishing spot a long way away. Only four minutes later and we head over to the trader, buy another research part, and get another achievement. Researcher Rods for researching all the rods in the game. Eventually, after another 20 minutes of looking through my steam achievements and my fish encyclopedia to look through what I have left, I find the final shrine of the four shrines, which grants us another achievement, Servant of the Shrines, for solving all the fish shrine puzzles. A couple minutes later, and we're back at the Wandering Trader, we buy a couple of research parts from her, and that's all it takes to get the last couple of research parts we need to research all the engines and get our final research achievement, Researcher Engines, for researching all the engines. Now, for the next 20 or so minutes, there was two very specific achievements I was looking for. Um, and for this achievement, there was one fish left that I needed. Um, I needed a moon fish. It looks like this. And it was not easy to find. It could only be found in oceanic waters. It also needed to be at night. I struggled greatly to find this fish, and I will admit I did have to look up where to find it. Once I knew where to find it, it honestly was not that bad to find, but I just wanted to call that out because it was quite annoying. I would also like to draw attention to just a couple of the other fish that over time, while I was completing all of the other achievements I was going through, and collecting fish here and there and I just wanted to call out a couple that really really frustrated me and believe it or not most of them are crabs I'm going to go in order of least frustrating to most frustrating uh, first off I've got the ocean sunfish here yeah very similar situation to the moonfish uh, just the fact that it was during the day that I could catch it made it easier that one honestly wasn't really too bad. It really just wasn't very abundant, that's all. 
Next up, we've got the Decorator Crab from the Gale Cliffs. This one, I didn't have a ton of trouble finding the aberration for it, but it just took me like 45 minutes to get the crab to show up. And it wasn't that frustrating because I was doing other things, but it was pretty annoying. Now, this last one frustrated me beyond belief. I am so lucky that I was doing other things while I was looking for this one because it would have driven me absolutely insane. I had no trouble finding the normal version of this one, but it took me probably seven hours to get the aberration to spawn, and I know that that is not normal. I was just very, very, very unlucky. But this one is the Crown of Thorns from the Stellar Basin. It was unbelievably difficult for me to find, probably because it's so big. But there was points where I am pretty sure that I had 15 to 20 crab pots out in the Stellar Basin trying to catch this thing, and I just could not for whatever reason. Anyways, after we managed to get all those fish round up, we got our next achievement, Master Angler, for catching all known species of fish. After that, it didn't take us very long to get our next achievement, Aberration Attractor. All I had to do was wait around in the same spots for Moonfish and get a couple of the Aberrations for it. And just like that, we caught all the Aberrations in game and now all we have are three more achievements to go. Wasting no time, we head straight back to the collector and have a conversation about what we're going to do with these relics. Unfortunately, we get into a little bit of a scuffle. I try and grab the book from him, and it turns out that he isn't in a doorway. He is just a mirror, implying that I am the collector, I guess. Um, but I guess we'll see where this takes us. We hesitantly tell the collector that we're ready to go with him, and... He tells us that there's really no going back from this and that we're going to have to wait till night. I agree and we just about get ready to go on our way. Once night falls, the collector somehow boards our vessel and tells us to head towards the big red ominous light in the sky, which never goes wrong. And there's nothing ever anything that happens badly in a situation like this. Not that I know of anyways. Once we arrive, the collector tells us that this is the right spot and that this is where she was taken from us. Who was taken from us? I'm not really sure, but we start reading from the book and tossing some of the artifacts overboard. Once the ritual is complete, we throw all the artifacts overboard and some strange lady starts to come up from the ocean floor as well as something else The credits roll as our next achievement pops, unshackled for finding a use for the relic, and we watch as the town that we found at the very beginning of the game, Greater Morrow, burns to the ground. We load up an older save and do just as we did a moment ago, taking the book from the collector, but this time we head to the lighthouse keeper to see what she has to say. The lighthouse keeper tells us we've had the book all along. Don't we remember where it happened? In the gloomy darkness behind the bay? Well, no, I don't remember any of that, but I'll take your word for it, I guess. She tells us we have to throw the book back, and we go on our way once again. We arrive at the place where it supposedly all began, and we're only given one option. Throw it back. We throw the book back, and it's not like it was before. It's calmer, but not totally calm. Almost as if we've made peace with the world that we've been fighting all along. Only to meet 
a very fitting end. Once again, the credits roll and we're afforded the opportunity to see the town of Greater Morrow once again. Intact and at peace, seemingly. Our final two achievements pop here. Sated for throwing back the book and from the depths for obtaining all other achievements. And just like that, we've 100% a dredge. It wasn't easy and I definitely had my problems with it, but I absolutely would recommend it. We'll get to that in a second though. Now, we can finally get to the part that we've been waiting for for this entire video, the namesake of the series, the 100, and finally giving a rating to everything that we've talked about so far. So, to start it off, we've got music, right? And I'm gonna give it a seven for music. The music was okay, it was ambient, there wasn't a lot of other music other than the ambient background music, but it did fit quite well and it was a good setting and it made you feel immersed. In terms of gameplay, I am going to give it a 7 as well. I felt like the gameplay was entertaining, absolutely, especially for the, like, the first half of the game, but it did get old, especially towards the end when I was spending hours and hours grinding to try and find the fish I needed. It definitely started to get a little bit stale, but still overall pretty fun, so it gets a 7. Next up, we've got Atmosphere. Atmosphere gets an 8. They did a good job creating the atmosphere to have a very ominous feeling, especially at night. Uh, and it did visual storytelling very well. Uh, the environments were varied and different and they all felt unique and I enjoyed a lot. I'm gonna group difficulty and length in together. They are both getting an eight. Uh, they felt pretty appropriate. Difficulty felt pretty on point for what it needed to be. It could have been a little harder, to be totally honest with you. I think I only died twice and one of the times I was just taking too long to go back to shore um and i can't even remember how i died the second time i'm pretty sure it was from blowing up my engines too much but it was pretty good all in all next up we've got story and story's gonna get a six i wasn't super invested in the story the whole time the endings definitely bumped it up a couple of points but if it wasn't for those endings, it would probably have been like a four or five or something just because I wasn't super invested in it throughout the game and it didn't push itself very hard. The variety, in my opinion, is the weakest point of this game, uh, the weakest aspect of it. And the variety is going to get a five. Um, there was only, I believe, three different fishing mini games and the dredge mini game. And that was it, really. In terms of other gameplay, there wasn't much in terms of anything else, with the exception being just driving around and talking to NPCs. Uh, I didn't find that there was a huge amount of variety with the gameplay or with the quests. That being said, I think the uniqueness of this game is probably the high point of it. It was quite a unique concept, uh, especially a fishing horror game. I don't believe I've played one before, um, if you could call it a horror game. but. Most people would, I would say. Uh, but it was a lot of fun, and it definitely used concepts that I have not seen in games before, which I really liked. Because of that, it's getting a 9 for uniqueness. This game was quite fun to finish, and because of that, it's going to get an 8 for how fun it was to finish. Um, where it really struggles is when it comes to how fun it was to complete. Uh, completing it became quite a drag, especially towards the end. So... In terms of there, it's going to get a 6. And with that, our playthrough of Dredge is officially over. With a final score of 72 out of 100. I had a lot of fun making this video, playing Dredge, and doing the editing for this video. Uh, it was a lot of work and took a lot of time, so if you made it this far, I'm sure that you enjoyed something about it. A like and subscribe would be massively appreciated. We are trying to get to at least 10,000 subscribers by the end of this 100 videos. I'm working on Shovel Knight, which will be out next Saturday. I'm going to try and put them out on a weekly basis. I really appreciate you watching this far, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.